how to build a dual wheel onboard trailer mule. The reason for building this new uh, trailer mule is traction. Part of my yard is decomposed granite, uh, part of it is sand, and also some campgrounds uh, are not paved. Some have dirt, some have grass, which is sometimes wet. So I needed better traction. So now I've got two wheels. They're each three and a half inches wide, uh, ten inches high, and the uh, the, the tires have mud lugs on them and so far it's working great. The tires I ended up with are not the ones that I began with. The uh, first tires I bought, tires and wheels I bought, had a, an, an inner tube and the traction on hard concrete was so great I was climbing a little bit of a hill in my driveway and it spun both tires on both rims and sheared off the valve stems so I bought uh, same size tires and wheels and everything except with solid rubber tires and as you can see in this picture I screwed them on and uh, it works great. Because this mule has two wheels turning in the same direction it's a little difficult to steer on hard dry pavement. It works great on softer uh, ground, grass, gravel, etc. Uh, but it's a little hard to steer on hard dry pavement so be sure whatever method, method you use to uh, make it steer is a sturdy one. My finished product looks a little bit different than, uh, than some of the videos. I built this while recovering from uh, total hip replacements on both hips and I for re forgot to uh, video some of the things. One of the differences, besides the tire, is that I attached the winch motor to the wheel assembly. Uh, instead of using two brackets, winch brackets, I use a single 2x2 two two angle. It works great. It's very strong. does not bend. Here's a close-up of that 2x2 uh, two two angle holding the winch motor to the wheel assembly. I originally had two uh, winch brackets but it just seemed to be too busy and uh, this seems just to be a lot simpler, a lot cleaner looking. One of the things I really like about the method that I used this time is that I used ordinary things that you could buy in any hardware store, a 2x2 two two angle uh, channel etc. It was not necessary to go out and buy an expensive construction anchor. Here's the list of parts that I used. My cost was $342. I decided to buy a new heavy duty uh, jack caster because the manual caster that I had just was not heavy enough. Also, uh, I bought a spare tire carrier to raise the unit up because my ground clearance is so little so uh, if I didn't have to buy those two things the cost would be two hundred dollars but uh, but as it is uh, everything that I bought cost a total of three hundred and forty two dollars before we begin building the trailer mule I'd like to point out how how uh, great this fork is the half inch by two inch channel is mounted securely up on top and 
at the bottom it's bolted securely to the 5 8 axle, axle making it extremely strong. Also please keep in mind that the finished product has solid rubber tires screwed to the rims instead of the pneumatic tires and also uh, instead of two winch brackets mounting the winch motor to the wheel assembly I used one winch bracket plus a 2 by 2 angle. Thanks. This trailer mule is going to be built out of mostly ordinary parts. Uh, angle, pieces of metal, things like that that you can buy almost any place. There's the winch disassembled as far as it needs to be disassembled. This winch is a little bit different than the last one. This pin does not have to be removed so that's pretty cool. Just unscrew the knob and take the spool out and there's two screws at the bottom of the plate. This half of the spool has to be ground off so we can slip the sprocket onto it. There's the first cut on the uh, pulley. I just clamped it into place. Make sure you're cutting off not the side with the gear but the one that the knob screws to this side. I use a uh, reciprocating saw. Cut off uh, four pieces and then uh, do the rest with a grinder or a belt sander. A few minutes of reaming and filing and sanding. Got a pretty good fit. The sprocket onto one half of the spool. The sprocket that I have is a three, about a three to three and a half inch sprocket, I forget, number with a number, for number 35 chain. It has a one in an eighth inch hole that needs to be reamed out to one and a quarter. So you can ream it out with a file, with a drill that's centered really good or a reamer, uh, a unibit, but it's really not too hard to do because the sprocket is aluminum and grinds or reams or files very easily. The sprocket came with six holes, but those holes are a little bit too close to this ring. They would, they would be touching this ring, which uh, fits onto the winch itself. So what I did, I came out a little bit and drilled six new holes. I also drilled one oddball hole, a little bit different, just so that I could line it up in case my measurement wasn't perfect. I just drilled an extra one here so I, I would know that the sprocket and the and the spool lined up. I also countersunk the holes a little bit. Here she is, the uh, sprocket mounted to the spool. I used 10 30 second screws, countersunk them, but they're they're out of the way of that of that rim. Then I put a nut, tied it down real good then a small washer and a quarter inch nut just for a spacer to allow plenty of clearance for the chain. There it is put back together again. You can see there's not a lot. I put a little piece of a uh, number 35 chain in there. There's not a lot of room but there's enough. There's a good quarter inch uh, clearance between the top of the chain and the uh, plate. So that's that's plenty. Also be sure to, there's only two screws on this winch anyway that hold the mounting plate to the motor itself so be sure to put some uh, Loctite on it. It came with some sort of Loctite on it from the factory. I had to put a, an Allen wrench in there and give it a little tap with a hammer to loosen it so be sure to do that.
So this is the spare tire carrier that I bought at e-trailer. And what I did, uh, the, the object of this whole project is to get more rubber on the ground and get the wheels off the ground. So what I did with this thing, I bought it to raise it up and get it away from the frame. Wanting to raise it up even higher, I had this old piece of plate. You could, you know, use one of your witch plates if you decide to buy them or anything. Anyways, a piece of 3 16 plate that I screwed, bolted to this bare tire carrier. And then I mounted my jack caster up even higher to get it off the ground. I'm going to hook that up now and show you how it looks. There's the jack caster bolted to the plate. This is my dual wheel setup. It worked out worked out really great, much to my surprise how easy it was. I bought two uh, three and a half by ten inch wheels tire and I bought a uh, six inch sprocket number with number 35 sprocket from uh, Andy Mark a 5 8 bolt and some 5 16 all thread that I used to tie the uh, the wheels together so what I did I took the inner tube out of this one just to show you uh, the hub unbolts so I just took this tub hub and uh, made a pattern so I could drill four holes uh, on the sprocket. And as it turns out, half of this little thing fits inside the sprocket on each on each uh, side of the sprocket. So got to line these up. So by uh, bolting these down. You can see I had a nut there, and then I actually did have the wheel together. But then my by uh, bolting these things together, and my five eighths all thread for my axle works out pretty well. See if I can tip this up. So there we go. Two wheels. Sprocket in the middle, plenty of clearance for the uh, the chain, and it's bolted together on either side. And this 5/8 axle will be bolted to the uh, to the fork that I'm building right now out of half inch by two inch channel. I believe I'm going to have to cut oh maybe a half inch to an inch off of this this axle, but it actually works out really well quite easy. There's the axle. There's the wheel. With a little bit of adjusting in between to make sure that this is bolted on either side of the sprocket and then I put a uh, then I put a nut on and then a washer. And then the hub, where this little thing sticking out, fits right inside the center of the sprocket. Pretty cool. This is my setup so far. I've got the two wheels mounted. Uh, there's my jack caster. That I bought from uh, from e trailer the one leg that I bent up the other leg I left where it is so that I could bolt my fork to it the fork I believe I'm gonna cut off here and here but uh, not just yet I also feel that I will cut this piece off right here just to make it just to make it flush. Uh, 
it looks cockeyed because it is it's just nothing is tightened down just yet I uh, I want to have the wheels spinning easily so right now I just have I've got three washers and a nut I think I'm gonna drill a hole through the nut and the axle once I determine you know the position of the axle this way and then put a cotter pin in it and then to center the wheels I'm gonna put a nut on this side of this channel of course one on this side too and tighten it down real good starting to do final assembly I found it easier to uh, take one of the wheels off to uh, to fit the chain I had to use a half uh, I had to use a half link to get this chain nice and tight. Also check for the sprocket being true. And I could have used a half link also as a master link because it has a pin, but that makes it a little bit more difficult to take it in and out in case you had to, you know, whatever change the tire. So I ended up putting a uh, putting a master link on. It's not uh not totally connected putting a master link on anyway just to make assembly in the field all set to bolt in here's our uh, there's our spare tire mount this will bolt to the a-liner flame frame I put this piece of black metal in so that I could raise this up off the ground as far as possible I've got uh, my fork in two pieces, one on each side. What I did for the play on the wheels is uh, put washers and cotter pins. I've got a little bit of a clearance maybe oh maybe five ten thousandths of an inch there's the steering arm just bolted on with a piece of metal it's a half inch square and a three-quarter inch square just like on the one that my previous uh, trailer mule will just slip right over. It's very, very simple. There's the motor. Twenty-five hundred pound winch motor. A little sprocket. There's the, the new mule, and next to the old one, there is a considerable difference. The two inch wide tire and the two three and a half inch tires with the uh, mud lugs on it. The old one weighed, weighs 33 pounds. The new one weighs 49 pounds. You can see the jack is a lot bigger, plus all the the brackets and hardware, etc. There it is, stowed for travel. For safety purposes, besides the locking handle that comes with the jack caster, I also put a 3 8 bolt in the other one of the other holes to just make sure, in case I hit a hard bump or something like that, it doesn't become undone. In addition to that, I tie a bracket to keep it from swiveling down also. So uh, any configuration is, uh, is good, but I recommend that uh, you, you bolt the motor and the winch and the jack securely before you uh, drive with it. In addition to the new trailer mule, I think it's a good idea to keep the jack caster that 
uh, is currently attached to your trailer if you have room. In my case, I instead of that, I used the uh, single wheel trailer mule that I already had. I just think it's a good idea to have a backup. Another strong recommendation I have is to not get a wireless remote switch. Rather, get one that is wired. The reason is a wireless remote takes about six inches for the trailer to stop. With a wired remote, you can just tap the button and that son of a gun will just move a quarter of an inch or less and it makes it really nice to hook it up to your tow vehicle. That's it. This is a wiring schematic for uh, for my trailer mules. I am wired to use uh, both of my trailer mules one at a t one at a time, but uh, for the wiring of one trailer mule, just ignore the uh, two three-way switches and the instructions in blue. Instead of buying a uh, a wired remote switch, I just went to Home Depot and AutoZone, bought some switches and a and a starter solenoid and a push button and it works uh, works quite well very simple to uh, operate but if you don't want to go this way then buy a I recommend that you buy a winch with a wired remote good luck Keep coming.